Here we go. Realm of Dreams arrives on February 27th. We've got a roadmap thing. Okay, it's not quite as pretty as our other roadmaps, but we've got it. The little one, little two, number three. It, this is from the, the concept art board. We've got that in there. We've got new titles for PvP and World vs. World. A slight difficulty increase to Raid and Strike Challenge modes. I bet you didn't see that one coming. Uh, and of course, all the usual stuff that we were expecting. So let's get into it. We have got the new content. We've got the new trailer. You can watch the trailer if you like. I'm not going to steal this trailer and put it in my video, but it's pretty cool. It's got all the usual stuff. It's got demons in it. It's got a little bit spooky. There's not as much story stuff in there as I'd expect. It doesn't really tease the main villain, most notably, actually. I guess we can just play it in the background here. It doesn't really tease the main villain uh, for the story. It's kind of like maybe a bit more set up. And that, it kind of suggests to me that actually the story is going to be more, not exactly set up, but I think it's going to be a bit of a slow burn. I think we're going to see kind of the climax more starting towards the end of this episode and then really kicking off in the finale of Secrets of the Obscure next time. That's kind of the vibe I get from this. We'll see how that one actually, you know, we'll see how that one actually turns out when we get there. But of course, we've got new map coming into play. We've got our new convergence bosses. We've got our legendary uh, relic coming into play. So last chance to make a legendary rune to get that one for free you've got our extra weapons bear that in mind so you've got all the brand new weapons coming into the end with all of the beta adjustments probably a few more tweaks alongside there as well uh you've got the legendary armor i mean goodness me probably there's gonna be a bunch more there's gonna be new skins right like all this kind of stuff like the usual it's a good see story update like we know what's going on here right it's the the usual things are happening here okay they are they are happening all that kind of good stuff. Uh, on the legendary armor, actually, uh, we actually do have some pretty good sneak previews of these that's kind of coming into play here. We've got the light armor here. The Another light armor there as well. There's another light armor. Then light again. Well, that's, yeah. Okay. Then you've got the medium armor, which I think is definitely the highlight here, actually. This one definitely seems to be the strongest set, as you can see here. I think pretty damn cool. Uh, you've got extra belts. I mean, look, you know, how many belts do you want? Many in this case. Then the heavy as well. I think the heavy is actually very decent too. It's very strong. I think uh, it looks very good with this char as well in particular. Looks, yeah, it's Azura, right? It honestly doesn't look horrible on Azura, but it is what it is. Um, it's the tier one, so bear in mind, this is kind of the least flashy version. Uh, we know there are going to be additional tiers of this, which are going to have more particle effects, I would imagine. Some more kind of shiny stuff. Very similar to how the world versus what in PvP armors currently operate, but honestly a solid foundation. I'm not crazy about them um you know it, it looks comparable to in my opinion it looks fairly comparable to gem store outfits but i think we'll see the tier versions probably uh improving in quality and iterating on that hopefully quite a fair bit there as well and i think you know the medium armor can definitely stand alone and the heavy can stand on as well too not everything has to be a particle effect fiesta looks pretty decent uh so get ready for material prices to absolutely explode uh, i hope you've been holding your tier sixes and mystic coins because oh boy this is going to be pain maybe they've added some really good farming into the game somehow uh and to kind of counteract that but man things are about to get pricey for a while because i think everyone's going to want to go for these not just for the skins of course but also also, um, because of the convenience factor of legendary armor. So it's going to get wild out there. And I imagine, very similar to uh, Gen, 2 Legend uh, Gen 3 legendaries and Ender Dragons, the actual cosmetic upgrades are going to be massive material sinks. Oh, oh man. I, I bet Anet are excited because holy shit they're gonna make so much money on gem to gold conversion the prices are gonna be unreal people are gonna be swipe i wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people just straight up swipe like hundreds of dollars uh, just to instantly buy this stuff like man it is payday cash money for arena around the corner because i think people are really gonna want to get their hands on these and of course the skins as well Got some other stuff though as well, and we actually have the next date for a systems update, and this is a big one actually, I forgot about this in my little intro, take a look at this. I can't believe it! It's finally happening! We almost thought ArenaNet forgot about this. This is a huge upgrade. We're introducing more granular options for the post-processing graphic setting. Currently, there are only three options available for post-processing, off, low, and high. Each of these settings controls hidden options such as bloom, color grading, color tint, distortion, light rays, and selection outline. These sub-options are now checkboxes in the options menu, allowing you to pick and choose which aspects of post-processing you just failed. That's actually massive, because in particular, 
particular the bloom does make the game very intense sometimes uh, and more options are always good but yeah i think this is really going to help out it means that you're not so reliant on third party stuff like reshade to make the game look how you want it to look which is actually a really big upgrade there of course we've got the balance patch we already saw the preview for this okay and oh dear look at this Bringing some unviable builds like Power Base Harbinger into the meta. I can't believe you would say that. There's going to be that one guy who plays Power Harb in PvE. And he's like, wait, how dare you call my build unviable? But yeah, they are buffing it a lot. We already have seen this. We know what's happening there. And then we've got PvP and World vs. World uh, 2 as well. Pretty fun. Um, now you have expanded titles. So you have like the titles for getting wins on each profession. And of course, Realm Avenger. So how many kills you got in World vs. World. And they're basically just cranking those up. Uh, to 11. So now you can go for Omega Genius, Ultimate Genius at 1.5k PvP wins, and Ultimate Dominator 10, I guess. Ultimate Ultimate Dominate uh, for getting 2.5 million World vs. World kills. So, wow. Insane. Pretty cool stuff. I actually think these changes are really nice. Like, having some like ultra long-term, basically infinite progression for players to go after, I think is is pretty good. I think it'll be nice to see basically god-style achievements from Fractals. This is kind of a substitute for that, but it'll be pretty interesting to see god-style achievements being added to PvP and also uh, to PvE, right? Because we've got World vs. World God. We have Fractal God. Um, I guess World vs. World God is maybe like not super interesting, though. It's like get rank 10k. Pretty dull, to be honest. Um, but it would be cool if you had like pretty well-rounded achievements that kind of contributed into this this kind of funnel. I suppose fractals was also the same. It's basically just do like a million fractals and you get it. But yeah, you could have raid god. You know, you could have uh, PvP god for I don't know getting getting all of the ultimate titles maybe or something like that. You got to win 1.5k times on every profession. I don't know. Uh, and some of that's actually pretty cool, right? Just make sure that the raid god does not give you more damage. Uh, we don't need that. Oh boy, we really really do not need that. Holy shit. They could also do this with with CMs as well, right? They could actually um. They could actually do some stuff like, uh, you know, like Strike CM God, right? Or something like that. So you have to do all the challenge modes and raids and strikes a lot. There could be like a counter on how many challenge modes you've done. That could also be pretty cool, I think. That's a good call by Angels, actually. It would be really cool if these titles did have different colors. So when you get to the really high tiers, you get a nice shiny gold title. We've seen they can do this with the blue extra life title. It would be really cool if you did have um, stuff like that. One thing that I think would be a really good change, um, the problem right now with the month monthly AT is that you either win the monthly automated tournament or you get nothing. Like, all the rewards are worthless um, unless you actually win. I think that actually really disincentivizes players to try because um, a lot of the time there's like one really dominant team and second place, third, fourth is has no value. It's completely worthless to anyone who cares about actual competition. Um, it would be really cool actually if uh, best of the best was actually extended down to third and fourth place as well. But if you win, you get a golden one. If you're second, you get a silver one. And if you're third or fourth, you get a bronze one. Then that could actually potentially really encourage people to kind of go for it, right? Uh, and, um, you know, they'd be encouraged to uh, to actually try to kind of climb up there because it means you don't just leave with nothing until you win. Like, very binary reward structures are not good in general. We kind of see some issues with that in PvE as well. But honestly, that's another video. I'm getting I'm getting off track here, okay? We're, we're, we're re -raising this and the lord update we're modernizing the loadout of castle keep and tower lords with the addition of a new channeled healing skill that aids objective defenders in combat giving the lord a more active role in battle attackers will need to keep a close eye on the lord and break their defiance bar to minimize the support they're able to provide as a note this is currently a stretch goal for the update and may need to shift out to a future update i would actually really like to see i'd really like to see uh, uh, the rationale behind this because i'm not gonna lie dealing with lords is already pretty annoying um uh, to be frank like they after like the damage nerfs came through they can take a really long time to kill especially if it's iron guards um especially if it's like massively scaled up as well that it can take a really long time to kill these um making this even more extreme and adding more defenders advantage i'm just not totally sure if that is super necessary maybe i'm just out of the loop here maybe this is a good change but I don't see it. I think Defender's Advantage in um, World Boss is already pretty strong. Uh, with, you know, you've got your Siege, obviously, Emergency Waypoint. You also have Gliding and Mount, which massively favors Defenders. I don't know um, if this is good. I would probably nerf uh, Lords rather than buff them. 
but who knows? Maybe I'm totally clueless, uh, but I don't know. Now the Lord is going to be more exciting as opposed to just, like whacking you with a sword, I guess. It is what it is. And here's the other interesting one here. Um, with the March 19th update, um, the, the Central Terrier Mastery, which increases revive speed and removes down penalty on successful revive, will no longer remove down penalty in strike mission or raid challenge mode encounters. This will help maintain the intended difficulty of these encounters by reinstating some penalties for ignoring uh, encounter mechanics. So this, this change is, I like what the, where they were going with this, but I'm not totally sure if it's going to have the outcome that they they want um this will make basically what does this do this means that uh if you downstate four times in raid and strike challenge modes you will now instantly die with no ability to recover and every time you get revived you're going to get revived on less health making it a little bit harder to stabilize funny enough this does make mercy relic pretty damn good especially on something like a heal scourge it already is good but this makes it really impactful i think um, overall. However, um, there are not that many situations where you're going downstate in very quick periods of succession, unless your group is very, very scuffed, uh, or you're very early on in progression. So I think this does make very early progression maybe a little bit harder, but you'd probably wipe anyway in a lot of those situations. And also, this doesn't really affect... This does not affect groups that are good, basically. Um, uh, groups that are already quite stable in clearing content and are, you know, highly skilled players who are very used to kind of PvE, I don't see this really affecting those groups very much at all. Um, it's definitely going to make things, m in, in a couple of situations, a bit trickier for lower, and like, entry-level groups and medium-level groups, but certainly not for higher-level groups. Uh, and, and maybe that is kind of the effect they're looking for. Um, because, you know, they, obviously, you know, there are way more entry-level and medium groups than there are high-level groups. That's maybe kind of what they're looking for here. But it, I wouldn't say it makes the encounters harder at, you know, like, harder at the high end, if that makes any sense. Like, for, you know, for, you know, it doesn't make them ha objectively harder. It's going to make them harder if you're less good at the game. Uh, I feel like that, <laughs> that sounds slightly toxic, but hopefully you know what I mean there. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a good change, I think. And I think it's kind of targeted at... Um, heal scourge a little bit, so you can't abuse stuff with heal scourge. But I think that's more of a mechanical issue. Like if you can just like skip mechanics over and over and over again um, with heal scourge, something is kind of going wrong with your mechanical design. But this kind of is a bit of a safeguard to that as well, I suppose, uh, in that regard. But yeah, uh, overall, I, I like the spirit of this. This is actually really cool. Uh, so I, I don't want to actually. Um, I don't want to criticize it too much because the spirit of this is really good. This shows that ArenaNet recognized that, I'm not going to lie, a lot of their content has been trivialized by power creep, even challenge mode content. It, hell, even HTCM is way easier now um, with the power level of builds that exists than it was on its original release, right? Like, the entire game has got far easier, uh, and they're, they are aware of that, and they do want to do a couple of things to address that. And honestly, that's worthy of praise. You know, I, I respect that. I wouldn't have seen that one coming uh, because, again, it's, it's not really a big part of the game. It's obviously not a priority for the game, so pretty cool. Uh, here as well. We've got Super Adventure Box back, and oh, I was kind of a little bit, I guess they kind of hinted at World 3. It looks like World 3 isn't ready yet, so just a couple new additions uh, to the World 3 test zone, as opposed to the actual full World 3. Looks like we might have to wait maybe another year, uh, or who knows, maybe we'll never get it, but honestly, that would actually be one of the things that I'd be the most hyped about, is World 3 Tribulation Mode. They better do Tribulation Mode if they actually do World 3. If they just do regular World 3 with no Tribulation Mode, man, that's lame, okay? That is low energy, my friends. Very low energy. But yeah, not happening just yet. And we also have this roadmap. And the first thing that strikes me about this, okay? And, and look, may, uh, this is a minor thing to quibble over, I know. But why is it so fettered? Okay, like, what? <laughs> what is this? It's like, this is kind of like the the overview for the, for the update and kind of like the next part of it. But... It, no joke, does look like this is almost like the concept. We even have, like, the, you know, the number one, number two, number three. This doesn't look like the polished product to me. Like, what happened to, to these, right? Like, what happened to this with, like, the nice images going on here? The little dates all aligned there? All the different things that are coming nice and sectioned out there? Why is it so scuffed? I don't know. Out of budget for this one, I guess. Um, <laughs> on this one, I don't know. 
But yeah, you can see all the things. You've got the legendary relic, you got the tier one of City and Armor, we've got the weapons, we've got the story, we've got the map expanding a bit, got new masteries, convergence bosses, uh, Wizards Vault. You know, one thing I'd actually like to see them do with convergences is actually shake up what the convergence is. Because new convergence bosses, sure, okay. But bear in mind, you're still going to be doing like the same pre event, which is going to be the bulk of the convergence leading up to the boss. And the boss is going to be RNG, so you won't even necessarily see the, the different bosses every time, right? You might go in and get the, the Demon Knight again. You might go in and get Sorrow again before you actually see the new ones. So I think Convergences might actually need to look there because you're still going to be doing the same old, same old. And, and again, maybe, maybe I'm actually wrong. Maybe they have changed the pre-event as well, but the pre-event is pretty lame in my opinion uh, and it's still going to be the same. So it would be nice to see them actually change that. Obviously new, the new Wizards Vault stuff. Temple of um, Thebe, Temple of Feba, challenge mode there as well. Um, and, you know, this is a little bit of wishful thinking. L let me whip out the cope here. Um... This is my read on the situation. The strike mission challenge modes are basically capstone, pinnacle, Guild Wars 2 PvE. Why are they not um, hyping that up? Why are they not celebrating that? Why are they not kind of pushing it a little bit more? It should be a bit of an event. It should be, look at this. This is the big bad boss. Look at our big bad boss that we added to our video game. Look at all the people trying to kill it. Can you kill it? I bet you can't, right? Like... I, I feel like that's the way it should be. It should be big hype, big event, big thing for the game coming out. Now, of course, there's a risk when when, when something's like Dagda, right? Because then it makes the game look really bad. Um, but I'm... Look, <laughs> I'm sure they've learned from that and they've made it a little bit harder. And I, I, it's probably not going to take that long to kill. Like, maybe a couple of hours is probably the upper bound for progression, I would say, um, for, for Sarah CM. But there's... Look, okay. Let's meme it up here a little bit. Like, ha, 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 yes. Dagda CM was an abysmal failure, okay? Like, of sure. Um, but the thing is, they Aina didn't want that. Like, Aina did not want the boss to literally die in one try. Come on, let's not be silly. They obviously didn't want that to happen. And I would be re I would be genuinely shocked. I would be so unbelievably shocked if Sarah CM comes out and gets one shot. Like, I I there's no way Aina will allow that to happen again. Because it's just not a good look. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I really wish they would hype this stuff up, you know? Like, same with the Fractal CM. They should be hyping this. You know, this is like a, a significant thing for the game. Um, and it, it, it's weird that we don't see it here. It's not shown in the trailer. It's not mentioned in the trailer. And it's mentioned in, like, two lines in the blog post. And this is some of, realistically, the Strike CM stuff, this is probably some of the most intensive stuff to make, right? Like, you know, it, it, you've got to be careful when you're designing a CM. Maybe not Dagda, but, like, if, you've do, if you do a Strike CM well... It's going to be a lot of effort from the company to make something like that. If this is high effort, it should be shouted from the rooftops. They should be promoting this. So, yeah, I'm going to have to... I will criticize them a bit for this. Like, why is it not here? Why is it not mentioned at all? Why is it not shown at all? Like, if there's a, uh, if there's a crazy new mechanic that's going on, show us the boss doing something cool, right? Like, he's doing some kind of, like, you know, deadly thing and blowing people up. I don't know. Show us that, but whatever. Maybe that is just cope. Maybe that is just wishful thinking. And then, of course, we've got the other stuff coming on a little bit later. Uh, that's going to be happening on uh, March 19th. That's happening there. Then you've got the other festival stuff there as well. And we've got the rushes, too, that are being shown. Fractal Rush bonus event. World vs. World Rush again. So maybe another little World vs. World event, too. Living World Season 2 bonus event. Heart of Thorns bonus event. Oh, you're going to get even more gold for your Octovine. Absolutely insane. And of course, looking ahead, we know the finale of Secrets of the Obscure is coming in just a few months away. So again, probably like three months, three to four months after that. And of course, we'll know the date because now uh, the Wizard's Vault has shown us the date of the new content uh, two out of two times. So it looks like this is going to be a soft release timer, basically, uh, for the foreseeable future. So we'll know exactly when it's dropping just based on the Wizard's, um, Wizard's Vault. So about 100 days afterwards, give or take, is probably what it's going to be uh, until the next release. When you're going to beat down the final boss, you've got the Fractal with CM, of course, and Tier 2 of the Obsidian Legendary Armor set as well. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that one's going to go. I, I, you know... Here's something that I will say. Um, I want to see ArenaNet really talk about the Fractal. Because if I was a Fractal player right now, 
I think I would be peak abyss level doom. Because if I'm a fractal player, the silent surf and a lot of changes that have been made to fractals, like status reset, have been the opposite of what fractal players want. It's been everything that fractal players don't like. Pretty much the 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 worst like time to be a fractal player ever in terms of stuff that's happened recently. Um so I actually really want to see Arena Net take some care um to reassure fractal players that they're listening and they want to create something that fractal players like. Like, is the new fractal just going to be a boss on its own? Is it going to have mini games on the way there? What are their goals with the challenge mode? Like, is it going to be a single boss? Is it going to be a multi-boss? Like, so is it going to be more like a nightmare fractal? Is it going to be more like Sunqua Peak? Is it going to be more like Shattered Observatory? Like, where are they going with this? Um, exactly. Because I think there's a lot of unhappiness amongst, like kind of more hardcore fractal players i'd really like to see their I, well this is kind of a this is kind of like a more of a a widespread thing but i'd love to see their encounter designer their whoever is the lead of encounter designer at arena i think we should see a stream with that let's talk about encounter design and, and go there because honestly when i see dag to cm encounter design i go what is this <laughs> Like, what, what, what? I, I don't get it. Am I missing something here? What? You, woo. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, the CM's coming. New relics. Tier 2 of the Obsidian Armor. So it's going to be all shiny and stuff like that. Get farming for that one. More Wizard's Vault and more. And then, of course... So it looks like we're going to get... I'm actually surprised they didn't drop the expansion announcement at the same time as the final episode. So it looks like that's not going to be the case. It's going to be final episode drops. And a little bit later, they're going to drop the X-Pack announcement. And it will be launching probably around the same time. Kind of August, September is when you're going to get the new launch. Pre-orders starting soon. So buy the game using my referral link. Oh, yeah. Uh, ha, 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 ha. 2024 is shaping up to be another great year for Guild Wars 2. You know, they should have just said 2024 is the year of Guild Wars 2. That would be a really fun way to end this. But it's, you know, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Not a bad post. Uh, they should get Trig right in these, man. I don't know, dude. I don't know where, I don't know where Trig's at, but, um, this one, definitely a little bit drier. You know, like, Trig spoiled us, man. Like, he spoiled us with his flavorful, hilarious jokes, um, and, you know, uh, very enjoyable language. This is a lot less enjoyable to read, to be honest. But it's not bad. Uh, you know, I, it's just alright. But anyway, that is the roadmap. That's what's happening. That's what's going on in Guild Wars 2. It's pretty good. Some nice little uh, surprises here. And of course, all the stuff that we already knew was coming. So there you have it. React content has been completed. Let me know what you think. Uh, be sure to, you know, follow and subscribe for more content. Zero to Hero is back. Zero to Hero is live on Twitch and on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube. Follow on Twitch. Follow my social media. Join my Discord to join the Zero to Hero guild. Oh, yeah. But you didn't see that one coming. And of course... Just like ArenaNet, I'll see you in the game. Thanks for watching, gamers. I'll see you next time. Oh yeah, like the video too. Feed the algorithm. Let it feast upon your mouse click.